أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من اللعين الشيطان الرجيم بفضل الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسل ربنا بالحق والصلاة والسلام وتحية والإكرام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا والشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا لسيما بقية الله في الأرضين أرواحنا وأرواح العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء My dear last brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته أوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل والورع عن محارمه يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم كتابه المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون آمنا بالله صلق الله العلي العظيم We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity to be here today and to remind each other of this important obligation to remind each other on the importance of seeking taqwa and trying to establish it in our lives and making sure that we always connect with our Creator, with our Nourish, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today we would like to discuss a little bit of steadfastness in the light of this verse in Surah, in Surah Fussilat. Ayah number 30 to 33. Because of the importance of this subject and because of the recent events in our Islamic nation. One of the most important topics that we need to remind each other on is istiqama. Istiqama in the sense that one needs to try as much as he can to stay steadfast, to remain on the right path. It's not just enough to declare faith and to consider oneself as a mu'min. There is an aspect of al-istiqama which means to maintain one's faith and to stay firm on the straight path, to stay focused on the right cause. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in these beautiful verses, draws our attention to this fact and he connects in the first place our hearts to himself and affirms the faith in him and describes what are the characteristics of those who connect with him, those who have faith in him. When he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ So in the first place, it's about those who have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they declare this faith. And we believe in nothing but Allah. رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ Our creator, our nourisher, our guardian, 
the one who takes care of us, the one that we rely upon, the one that we put our trust in, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they have this connection with Allah. Like after looking at everything and assessing everything, they end up with this conclusion that we have no any other God, we have no any other guardian apart from Allah. Rabbun Allah. This is the faith. The faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his oneness, in his unique attributes, not only in his existence, but in what his essence is. Rabbun Allah. Then he tells us that this faith that fills their hearts and this faith that encompasses everything in their lives shows itself in the actions. It is portrayed in the way they behave. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In the Ladina Kalu Rabbunallah, Thummas Takamu. After they have this firm faith, it wasn't just enough. They acted upon it. This faith showed itself in their characteristics. It happens to some people that they claim to have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when they are faced with challenges and, and they face tests, when they are confronted with the storms of desires or retributions, they face calamities, they are unable to stand with this faith. They give up their iman. They are quick to surrender to their own desires. Or they become weak to resist the storm of challenges that come against them. And you see this in many examples. It's not working. It's not. I think I'm loud enough. The, the, uh, I think the bit is weak. Salah ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. They become weak in front of the challenges that may face them. And they are quick to surrender and give up their own principles in front of these things. But those who are true in their faith, this, those who are sincere in their iman, they will not be shaken by these storms. And they will not be weak in front of their desires. They stay, they stay firm and steadfast on this path. This is what is required. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to achieve in this life. And this is something that we are challenged to maintain throughout our lives. Until the last moment in our lives. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says about this phrase, about this statement, قَدْ قَالَهَا النَّاسِ ثُمَّ كَفَرَ أَكْثَرُهُمْ فَمَنْ قَالَهَا حَتَّى يَمُوتْ فَهُوَ مِمَّنْ إِسْتَقَامَ عَلَيْهَا Many people claim this love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They claim Iman. 
But the prophet says that most of them, they disbelieved at the end. But there are very few people who maintain this position of Iman and stayed firm on this path. So whoever says this and stays with it until the end, this is the one who is referred to as Istaqama, Thumma Istaqama. Amir al Mu'min salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Says, Waqad Kultum, and this is addressed to all of us. Says, Waqad Kultum, Rabbun Allah. You have declared, you have expressed this, that our Lord is Allah. You are all saying this. Therefore, if this is what you are declaring, he says, Fastaqimu ala kitabi. Then be upright. Hold fast on the book of Allah. If this is your faith, this is what you have declared in. You are saying you are Muslims. You are saying you are followers of Rasulullah and Ahl Bayt. Fastaqimu ala kitabi. Then be upright and hold upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not be in doubt. Do not sway off. Istaqimu. Hold upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fastaqimu ala kitabi. Wa ala minhaji amri. Then hold fast on, the, on his path, on his way. Wa ala tariqati saliha min ibadati. And on the right way of his worship. As we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Guide us the straight path. And we desire to have this quality. We decide to follow this path. But it's upon us to make sure that we act upon what we say and what we declare. Don't get out of this way. Do not come up with innovations. Do not try to create your own things and create your own paths. Follow the path that you are shown. وَلَا تُخَالِفُ عَنْهَا And do not go against this path. This is istiqama. This is why when Al-Imam Ridha salawatu Allahi wa salamu alayhi was asked to narrate to, narrate to the people, to the gathering, a hadith, any hadith that he connects it with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he narrated this Hadith which is known as uh, the Al Hadith Lisat al Dahabiyya. Very short hadith which he narrates from his fathers, from Amir al Mu'ina, from Rasulullah, from Jibra'il, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It says, Kalimatu la ilaha illallah hisni. The statement that there is no God but Allah alone is my fault. Man dakhala hisni amina mina adabi. Whoever enters my foot will be saved. Will be saved from the, from the hellfire, from the, from the punishment. Then he went some few steps ahead and look, looked behind and told them, Bishartiha wa shrutiha. But this is with conditions. And I am of these conditions. Believing in the wilayat of Ahl Bayt is one of the conditions of this tawheed being complete. Why? Because it is the guardian of all the principles that we believe in. As Fatima to Zahra, salawatullahi wa salamu alayha, Said in her famous khutbah, Wa ta'atuna nidhamun ilmilla. Obeying us, your obedience to us, is what will safeguard you, is what will maintain this religion, this wilaya. So when he was asked about his affairs, he said, 
Well, here, wallahi ma antum alayhi. So long as you are holding on the wilayat of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, then you are assured of being on the right path. The reality is, our real value is in two things. Is in our faith and good actions. And this is what is shown in the phrase, ثم استقام إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقام. Now look at the rewards. Look at what they achieve. Those who stay steadfast on the path of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. In these verses, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala describes or points to about seven important benefits or rewards for those who remain steadfast on the right path. And this is in comparison to those who disbelieve, to those who go against the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the end of it, they regret, they're angry with each other, and they feel a loss. While those who have the iman, and they remain steadfast, look at what happens to them. Look at the verses very quickly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this who say steadfast, tatanazzalu alayhimul malaika. Angels come down on them. Tatanazzalu alayhimul malaika. Angels, pure creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who do not carry anything but good, they surround them. They come down on them. تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَ They are comforted by the angels. They are in the company of the angels. What do they say to them? The angels speak to them. Perhaps we may not hear them saying whatever they say because of some of the veils between us and them. But this is what they tell those who have faith and those who have remained steadfast. They tell them, Allah takhafu wa la tahzanu. La takhafu, do not fear. We fear about the future. We fear of many things that would happen when we think of death, what happens after death. We get frightened when we hear about the sirat, and we hear about the kutub, and all these things that we are told, the punishment, what's going to happen to whatever I have in this world, about my children, after my departure, and all that. This all brings fear. The angels comfort the believers and tell them, do not fear. وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Al-Khawf is about things that we have been told they have not happened, we expect them to happen. Al-Huzun is about those things that have already happened. And they, li they leave in us a sense of loss, grief. So we have lost some opportunities. We have committed sins here and there. We have not gain thawab, or we have not done much to ourselves, we become sad, we grieve on those. But after embracing Iman, and choosing the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and staying steadfast on it, the angels console us on that. And they assure us of this rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah takhafu wa la tahzanu. Do not fear, do not grieve. And third, do what they tell us, or they tell the mu'mineen, وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ أَلَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ Glad tidings for you, for the jannah, for the paradise that you have been promised. It is ahead of you. There's a discussion of whether this is the, at the time of death only, or the time when a person is in the qabr, or the time when he is resurrected. But looking at the verse, 
it cuts across all the stages in our lives. During our world life, even at death, at the time of being in the Qabr, at the time of Nashir and resurrection, all this is given to us, to the believers. The paradise that carries everything that we have been told, and we have been told that therein, there are things that have never been heard of. You have never seen them, you have never heard of them, you have never even imagined about them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept them for you. Then they also assure you of this. We are your guardians. We are your protectors. We are with you in this world as well as in the hereafter. It's an assurance. I will not leave you alone to go astray. We will not leave you alone to suffer. We will be supporting you. This is what gives the believers the energy, the hope, the strength to move on with difficulties in their life. So when they are faced with challenges, they are relaxed because they are sure of the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels comfort them with this. The fifth reward, In Jannat, you will have whatever you desire of the material things. You'll get whatever you want there. And whatever you desire of ranks, of spiritual elevations and all that, going to get it there. And then lastly, Nuzulan min Ghafur and Rahim, you are guests of Allah, the merciful, the one who is forgiving. Now he is the one who receives you there, the one who showers you with all these blessings. This is the reward for standing or staying steadfast on the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore we are required to remind ourselves of this and to make an effort that we stay on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we try as much as we can not to be weak in front of desires, in front of calamities. This is the way we can be successful and this is the way we can at the end, be happy. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us tawfiq, to remain steadfast on the right path, and to be among those who are greeted and are comforted and accompanied by the angels in this world as well as in the hereafter. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufwan ahad. Allahumma <laughs> Once again, I do remind myself and all of you to be careful of our duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make an effort to establish proper taqwa in our dealings, in our actions, in everything that we engage in. Two things in this khutbah, just uh, as a reminder, first of all, we extend our condolences to the Imam of our time, to the leadership of the Islamic Republic of Iran, to the ulamas to known across the globe, on the demise of uh, very esteemed personalities who stood to serve humanity, as Sayyid Ayatollah 
Ibrahim Raisi and his companions who perished in the plane crash. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he showers them with forgiveness, with maghfirah and rahmah, and that he consoles all their people, their families, and all Mu'minun. Indeed, they are a great example of how a person should be, and especially when he has a position in serving the people, serving the humanities. This is something that should always remain in our, in our thoughts. And remember those who sacrifice their lives and their comforts in the service of humanity. You can see how these people endure the pains and sacrifice everything for the oppressed across the globe and did not spare any effort in serving their own people. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for lofty positions for them and that they be raised with Rasulullah and Al-Aimah Al-Athar salawatullahi salamu alayhim. And number two, there will be a global a peace leadership conference in which uh, Dr. Efes Abdullah is going to be part of it and as the leader of IRCK, going to give a speech. And uh, we are encouraged to take part and participate in this as many subjects will be discussed on uh, global peace and leadership. And many things would come out, maybe would be of benefit to uh, all of us uh, who live uh, in this world. And many, uh, many leaders of the world will be also uh, participating. Also, we are looking uh, forward to an election of IRCK. And uh, this time, uh, we're praying that a Muslim leader uh, be the one who heads this organization, which plays a crucial role in our country in unifying uh, different faiths and promoting peace and uh, uh, harmony in, in our country. And we pray that, inshallah ta'ala, this be an organ of goodness and harmony and peace uh, in our nation. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin abdika wa rasulik wa salli ala aliyin amir al-mu'mineen wa salli ala Fatima al-Zahra sayyidat al-Nisail al-Alameen wa salli ala al-Hassani wa al-Hussain sayyidai shababi ahl jannat min al-Khalqi ajma'in wa salli ala a'immat al-Muslimin min duriyat al-Hussain Ali ibn al-Hussain zayn al-Abidin wa Muhammad ibn Ali al-Baqir wa Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq wa Musa ibn Ja'far al-Kadhim وعلي بن موسى الرضا ومحمد بن علي التقي الجواد وعلي بن محمد الهادي والحسن بن علي زكي العسكري والخلف الهادي المهدي حججك على عبادك وملائكة في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائمة اللهم عرفتنا من الحق فحملنا وما قصرنا عنه فبلغنا اللهم اغفر لنا والجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تاب يا اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك سميع مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر والحمد لله رب العالمين